Hey guys, welcome to Algebra 2. We are going to start our review section. We're going to start out by talking about domain and range, and we're going to sneak in a is a relation a function type of problem or two, and we're going to kick it off that way. Hopefully, this is review for you at this point in Algebra 2, but if it's not and you've never seen some of this stuff before, then you're in luck because that's why we do review. So, there are a few different ways to represent a function. One way to represent a function is with ordered pairs, right? Ordered pairs. So you could have something like 0, 5, negative 2, 8, and 6, 24. Whoops. So, the title of this video is Domain and Range, right? So that's where we're going to start as far as this review. Hopefully, again, this is review, but if not, then here we go. So, the domain of this little three three-point function is what x can be. Now, there's other ways to say that, of course. Like you could say it's the list of all the independent variables. It is the inputs into the function. Um, yeah, it's x's, all of those kind of things. There's, there's different ways to say it. So the domain for this particular function is 0. This is the domain. negative 2, 6, right? So list of all these x's is the domain. So you may have already guessed accurately that the range, where did my, what has happened? What has happened? Where's my, where's my tool? Oh, I accidentally hit the wrong button. That's what happened. Trying to make a new swatch. I don't need a new swatch. <laughs> the range is what y can be. Or the dependent, list of all the dependent variables, or the, <coughs> the outputs of the function. So in this case, we're looking at things like 5, 8, and 24. So the range in this case would be that set, be 5, 8, 24. So I alluded to in kind of the introductory part of this video that we were also going to squeeze in whether or not a relation is a function, remind you of that. And so what we're looking for when we're, when we're asking the question, is it a function yes or no what we're at what we want to know is does x repeat the when you if you you learn about this in algebra 1 you probably got some sort of formalish definition like um for every input, there must be only one output in order for it to be a function or something along those lines. And, but really, the e this is kind of this at this point in Algebra Two, we're we're kind of taking stuff that we've learned in Algebra One, and we're kind of shortcutifying it. We we do that a lot in Algebra Two. It's it's nice, and so we really that's really kind of what we need to think, and that's kind of the shortcut phrase. Does X repeat? So in this case, is this a function? Well, yes, this is a function because zero negative 2, 6. It never repeats there, right? We don't have 0 pointing to two different things. And I said pointing because that's another way to kind of illustrate a function. We might see a mapping of functions. So something like a bubble diagram like this to where we have the domain over here. 
And then we've got the range over here. And then for the domain, we might have six, two, eight. And then for the range, we might have negative five, 0 0.1, three, and negative 12. And then when you see a bubble diagram like this, that's a, or a mapping diagram, then we have the domain mapped onto the members of the domain mapped onto um, different members of the range. So maybe something like this. Now, if you've studied this before, your your head already might be screaming. So, oh, and, and you may be already coming up with some ideas. So if we were to ask the question, is this a function, yes or no? If this is if this is review for you, then you're already screaming, no, it's not a function. Let's, if you, if this isn't review and it's new, let's kind of uh, walk out what's going on here. So this six for this input right here, it only has one output. That's great. That's good. For this two over here, it only has one output. Every time we put a two into this function, we get out a 0 0.1. That's great. But for this eight right here, if we put in an eight, we get a three or we get a negative 12 or both or whatever. And so that makes this not a function. The other main way that we see functions rep, oops, I keep hitting wrong buttons on, on accident. I'm getting all kinds of excited here <laughs> or something. The main other way that we see a function is with a graph or a relation is with a graph. So we might have something like this, and I'm, I'm doing a really loose sketch because we're, we're conceptifying. Once we get into some more detailed graphing and some things, then uh, we'll use, I'll pull out the graph paper and, and make it not real nice and neat and all those kind of things. So I'm gonna draw two things, two different graphs on here. Draw the first one, something like this maybe. And then for the second one, let's see, let's do something a little bit wilder. We did yellow. Let's do something like this pink so that we have something different. And we might have something kind of like that. Drawn weird on purpose. So the domain here on these guys, guys would actually be for the yellow one, the domain would be all real numbers. At least we assume it would be, be based on the way it's drawn. Okay, because the X's on this, it keeps on going forever and ever to the left and keeps on going forever and ever to the right. Okay, now what would the range be? The range would be, in this case, I, I didn't label any numbers, right? So I don't know what number it is, but the range in this case would be everything from here and up, so whatever this is, say that was negative one maybe on the Y or, or negative five or whatever, it's negative something, right? Because it's below the X axis. So negative something, <coughs> so I'm gonna just, for the sake of example, we're gonna, we're gonna see this as we look at very specific functions, quadratics and cubics and all kinds, of, we see a lot of different kinds of functions in this particular class. We'll get more and more meat on this. So I, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time looking at real tight examples. Just wanna make sure you remember the concepts and the basic idea. So the range here, if I put in interval notation would be from negative something to positive infinity, right? If you don't remember interval notation, we'll see that more as we go to may even, I, I can't remember. We may squeeze in a review video of that at some point in the course. We'll kind of see what happens. So the only thing we need to ask now with the yellow one is, is it a function? Is it a function? So in order to answer this question with a graph, we use something called the vertical line test. 
vertical line test. And it is basically what it sounds like it is. Okay, so what we do, you know, if I if I was showing this, it's like in a, with a, a paper or something, I'd probably pull out a ruler or my pencil or something, and I would, and you would go and, and go across it. But when we're when we're looking at it on here, I like to kind of draw some little vertical lines, right? So as we're coming across here with vertical lines, I'm not paying real close attention. What we want to know is does at any point as we're going across this with a ruler or a pencil or whatever, some other vertical line, does the line ever touch our graph more than once? So does X repeat, right? And so like for this one, it touches it once. This one, it touches it once. This one, it touches it once. And this one touches it once and et cetera. All the way across this yellow one, it does in fact only ever touch it once. So this is a function. Now, I won't if if we were to do this pink this pinkish one, the the domain and range would both be all real numbers because this is this one is going all the way to the infinity to the left or negative, infinity to the right, infinity up and infinity down. We usually go down to up, but you get the point. So for the domain and range, it would be all real numbers on this pink one. But what I wanted to illustrate with this pink one is if we do a vertical line test, and I'll just draw a couple, like if I do one over here, then it passes, right? Just touches it once. But if I draw a vertical line here, it touches the graph one, two, three times. So if we're asking ourselves, is this a function It is not a function, right? And so that's it. There's a review. That's it. Those, those, that's what we're covering. We're going to continue going on. It's going to get more and more crazy as we go. Hopefully this is a review. If not, you may have some questions. If there's any part of this that you're confused about, let us know down in the comments below. If you're one of my students, then you can ask me in class or, or on our, any of our back channel stuff and all that stuff. I'll look forward to seeing you in class. Don't forget to do your homework, all those things. Guys and gals, appreciate a like, a comment, subscribe would be wonderful. Comment down below how else we can help you with math, science, or general homeschooling stuff. Thanks and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.